Today I'm going to show you how I made this so-called flip-flop journal from beginning to end. Welcome, it's Barbara from Vienna, Austria. So I happened to stumble upon a video by Beth's Journal Boutique, which I will obviously link below for you, in which Beth has really clear instructions on how to make the base of such a flip-flop journal. I instantly fell in love and had to try my own version. This is a design team project for the Digital Collage Club. and I'm using a few downloads, which you can see here. You can find them all linked below this video. And in case you've never heard of the Digital Collage Club, it's a membership-based website with thousands of royalty-free digital craft supplies. Once you sign up for a membership, you get instant access. All images are created exclusively for this club. New images are added each week and you are able to sell the craft items you created with these images. There are two options available, a membership for one year or a lifetime, which means you pay once and have access to all the images and tutorials for your videos your whole life. You can find discount codes for both types of memberships linked below in the description box. I would like to point out that I do receive a commission if you use these links. So it's also a huge help for my small creative business. As always, thank you in advance if you sign up or if you joined in the past using my link. Please note that in order to use my codes for the discount, you need to use the link below. Otherwise, it will not work. So I'm starting out with three long envelopes and two smaller envelopes and I chose the two small envelopes to have a similar width to the large ones. So I'm starting off exactly like Beth did. So I'm taking the small envelope and then I'm taking a large envelope and we stick the flap of the large envelope inside and then we glue this flap onto this envelope. I'm going to use art glitter glue. Use any glue that does not warp your paper. So a solvent-based glue. If you use a water-based glue, it will probably warp your paper. So you could use, for example, the Colal glue or the Fabri-Tex or the three-in-one glue or the art glitter glue. Even a glue stick will work. So I'm going to put this further towards the bottom, not towards the middle. And you want to be sure to glue it down so that you can still easily fold it over. So be sure not to go over this fold here. So that's step number one. Then I take the second large envelope and I'm going to open this one up. So I'll just take a letter opener. And then turn it around, open it and glue this flap behind this envelope. So this is exactly what Beth is doing until now. I tried doing this with double-sided tape, but it's nice to have a little bit of wiggle room when you attach your envelopes to each other. You always want to make sure that you can still fold over your envelope easily. And in Beth's tutorial, she opens up the second envelope as well, but I'm not going to do that simply because of the shape of my envelope. So you see, I have this shape here. With this type of envelope, it's easier to just keep this closed so that I have a straight edge here. So in this case, I'm just going to glue my flap of the envelope here and leave it intact. So now the way I fold it is this goes in, this goes up, this is down, and this goes up again. So in the end we have an M like that and we have this extra flap here. And all the places where we have the valleys is where I'm going to sew in the signatures. So I'm going to close this. This is the back side. Now I'm going to take my second small envelope 
and I'm going to attach it on the right side here more towards the top because the one on the front is more towards the bottom so I'll attach that right there again making sure that I can still fold the flap over easily now from the back side we have now a W and we have two envelopes Beth opened up this envelope here as well so that it flips out but with my type of envelope I'm not going to do that so now it really doesn't matter where the front or the back is we're going to be adding signatures on both sides so this is theoretically the back Again, I would add my signatures here to the valleys. And when I flip it around, again here, I would add my signatures to the valleys. The construction might look confusing if you've never made one, but as soon as you put together your first one, you will see it's actually really easy. And the cool thing is you can make so many different versions of this. Next, I'm going to ink up all of my edges with Vintage Photo Distress Oxide. Both front and back, of course. And then I also want to make sure that all of these parts of the envelopes are glued together well. So check all of your edges. Then I chose the images for the front and the back envelope, which are these here. And these come from the Shabby Chic Digital Papers. So this one is cut from this paper. So that's just cut from there. And then this one here is cut from this one. That was like that. This one would also make a really nice image for the front. So I've inked those up and I'm just going to glue them down on the front and the back. If you don't enjoy sewing in signatures, this might not be the best project for you <laughs> because I think I'll have four or five signatures to sew in here. How gorgeous is this flower? And I've just printed everything on regular copy paper and I chose the best quality and I chose borderless. Also, in my opinion, there is no need to put glue in the middle of your paper. That's just a waste of glue. Just put it on the edge. Moving on to the inside. Of course, I want to cover all of this as well. With my envelope sizes and the A4 paper size, unfortunately, the short end of my A4 paper is not long enough for the envelope. So I have to use it this way. And so I decided to print this one out twice so, so that I can cover this whole inside here with the same paper. And this one is from the Vintage Polka Dots paper pack. So this doesn't have to go all the way into the envelope, just maybe about till half. So I just need to measure the height and cut both of these in that same place, obviously. So after inking up the edges where I cut it, I'm going to insert this into my envelope far enough so that when I open this a little bit, I still see the pattern and not the envelope underneath. Make sure it's straight and then I'll glue that down. And I'll do exactly the same thing with my second print. And then I refold my envelopes. And then I'll also ink up these lines here. And then I'll turn it around. And I can cover this and this is much easier because I don't have any pockets. So I have two of these purple ones and these are not going to be enough because you know on the other side we didn't put the papers all the way to the end but this time we have to so we still have this strip in the middle. I think I'll just take the blue one and 
just cover it like this and then just cut them down ink them up glue them on and for these i am adding a little bit of glue on the whole page just because we have these creases and i want to make sure that these papers will fold nicely and not buckle Again, I'm going to refold my envelopes and ink up this middle line here. Okay, let's turn it around again. And now we need to cover the rest of these areas. So one, two, and one, two here. I'm not sure yet if I'm going to cover the inside here because I think the gray might be fine, but uh, let's see. And for those pieces, I'm going to use papers from the Shabby Rose Paper Pack. So I didn't print all of them, I just printed these. And they just all go together so nicely, also with the previous papers that we've added. And to be able to have a shape like this, I first cut the paper to have the same size as my envelope and I'm going to insert that here. Make sure it goes all the way down to the bottom and then I can just trace my shape here. And then I'm going to cut just a tiny bit inside of that line so that I have just a little bit of a border here. So after inking up your edges, you can just glue that down. And I just realized I forgot to ink up the edges of the envelope inside. I don't want those white. And I'll do the same thing on this one. And I'm choosing the same paper. And then I do the same thing with this envelope. Just always make sure that you've really pushed the paper all the way to the end. And again, I'll cut a little bit inside of that line. And I'm also going to ink up this and this edge here. And if your paper has a certain direction, for example, I will double check that this is facing the right way if it matters for the papers I'm putting down. This piece is not big enough, unfortunately, for this envelope. So I will use this paper for here instead. And I just realized I cut it the wrong way. <laughs> because the flowers go this way, it's not a big deal. They're kind of upside down, but I don't think it matters. Didn't I just say to pay attention to that? <laughs> all right, and now we have all of our envelopes covered. So let's flip it through once so that we get an idea of what it looks like. I'm so in love with this flower. So we have this, we'll add a little signature in here. And we'll add a signature here. We'll add a signature here. and here and here and it's the next day and since i couldn't sleep last night i decided to work on some ephemera for this journal i think between midnight and three o'clock in the morning <laughs> and i was very happy to wake up today and have all this done so let me show you what i've been up to at night <laughs> so i put together five signatures they each have, I think, like six or seven pages. Yeah, this one has seven. So yeah, I added a couple of original ephemera to each signature. I printed some of the paper kits on vellum, which is always fun. I added some coffee dyed papers. These are really old copies of doilies where I literally just put the doily on the copy machine and printed it on coffee dyed paper. I've had these for years and finally now I have a journal to use them in. These are again from a kit. So obviously, as you can see, I've added purple splatters and this is again original ephemera. So you'll see a flip through at the end. 
Then I went through my own ephemera that I had pre-made and then never used, as well as things I've been collecting, like these beautiful cards. I think they're tea cards. They're Australian cards. I'm assuming they're something like tea cards. I thought some of these would go in here really well. Some random tickets, random things that I found. Tally card, bingo paper. Then I printed these on copy paper. These are labels, which you can also find below from the Digital Collage Club. Here's some more ephemera that I had made. Oh, I also have this cutie right here. I think this will go here very well. And then just some like really small, very eclectic tags I thought I might be able to put in here. Then I cut some pieces of lace to add as pockets. And then these are all from the Digital Collage Club. And I backed all of these with vintage papers and added some splatters to them. I was busy in the night. Good job. <laughs> I think it's such a good way to get rid of the white backsides of printables to just add scraps of papers. I think most of us have a lot of paper scraps laying around. So this is such a good use. Also these small ones I backed and I think it makes your ephemera so much more, I don't know what's the word, substantial. <laughs> you know what I mean. And there's these cute bookmarks. I haven't done anything on the back sides with these because I thought I would probably be gluing them down like a belly band or something. But if I don't glue them down, then I would also back them. Then I took two of the postcard printables and made them into button cards. I didn't want to cover up the twine in the back. I think those are super cute. And then I took some lace scraps and just added some bulb pins with some beads. Here's one of these beautiful old safety pins. And then I also added some ribbons to some paper clips because I'll be clipping some of the ephemera onto pages. Some only have some eyelash yarn on them. Yeah, and then I have this here, which I never used. This came in one of the Your Creative Studio subscription boxes. Maybe it's something I want to add in this journal. Not sure yet. So the next step then for me is to sew in my signatures. I'll do a very simple three-hole pamphlet stitch. And I'm choosing this off-white embroidery thread. So for the first signature, since I have to sew it in between the envelope here, I only have this tall. So I'll measure three lengths of that. I added paper clips just to the front side of my signature. I like it to be flexible, so I don't like to add them here on this page. And then I'm just going to wing it. I'm just going to make sure this here is centered here and then I'm going to estimate where the middle of this envelope here is and just go for it without pre-punching any holes. This method is so stress-free, I love it. <laughs> so then I just go on top here. I skip the middle hole and I go down to the bottom approximately the same distance that I have here I'm going to have down here easy peasy and then back into the middle making sure I do not pierce my thread and then I'm making sure that I come out on the other side of this twine here and then we just pull tight, make a double knot, and our first signature is secured. Very beginner friendly. Except the double knot. That is always tricky when you don't have a third hand. <laughs> okay, double check that it's tight enough, and then snip off your ends.
Okay, first one in, then we find our next valley, which is here, and I'll sew in this one right here, and so on and so on until I have all five in there. One thing I'm noticing is when you're sewing in the signatures, since this is a flip-flop journal, it will flip-flop around while you are moving your journal back and forth and it will open and close and that might be a bit frustrating. So it's easier to keep the parts that you're not working on together with a paper clip or some other clip so that you don't have so many moving parts. <laughs> and I'm also realizing it is easier if you pre-poke your holes. So just take your awl or whatever you have and poke through them and make sure you don't move your signature. So even without adding anything else inside, this is already so fun and yummy. I love that you can just turn it around and you have signatures on all sides. This is super fun. So I really hope that you try this. This is what it looks like from the top. Obviously it's going to get a lot bulkier once I start adding ephemera. Love it, it feels so nice such a great size. Okay, so now it's time to add my ephemera. Of course, this is the best part of a journal, right? Where you just add stuff, especially if you have pre-made stuff already. I'll start by adding my lace pockets. So this one I'm adding so that a part of it peeks out on the bottom because that will just create more beautiful interest from the front. I'm using textile glue for this. And if you're not sure what glue to use for what, please see my video. <laughs> Open your glue bottle, Barbara. <laughs> please see my video linked below where I talk about my favorite adhesives and what I use them for and why I use them. And I also don't want to add any mas machine sewing to this journal. And when I add a sheer pocket like this, and the glue obviously still needs to dry, I'm adding a piece of baking paper before I turn the page, otherwise these two will glue together. And that would make us very unhappy. Then I'll add my page tabs, making sure to distribute them evenly throughout the journal. And always looking also, for example, if I want to put one here, Always checking how will the whole thing look from the front. We want to invite the viewer into the journal. So the more things we have peeking out, the more curious we are to open it up and to look inside. For example, I love this here like that. Next, I'm going to check where I can add some of these cool labels. For example, here I can make one into a pocket. I'll use my art glitter glue because I know this won't warp the paper. You could also use your Kolal 3-in-1 or Fabri-Tac. Any glue basically that is solvent-based and not water-based like a PVA glue. Next, I want to add some of these very sweet bookmarks. For example, I think this one would be really nice here. I would definitely want it to peek out on top like that. And then that could be a belly band. But if that peeks out, of course, we have the white here. So instead of covering that with a scrap, which is more work, I could just stencil something very quickly. Or actually, I don't even need to stencil because it's such a small part that we're seeing. So I'll just take my Uncharted Mariner and just go over the top like that. And then, of course, we need to add something in this hole here. So I'll use some of my coffee dyed white eyelash trim if I can find an end. 
I printed these on 200 GSM, just in case I haven't mentioned that. And that is important because otherwise I think this would tear now. So I'm going to be gentle tying this. And I want to cover up this here. And since these aren't long enough, I could just glue two of these together to make a longer one. And it's another opportunity to have something fun sticking out on the top. So I will continue adding things and then I'll be back with a final flip through. Many, many, many hours later, she is done. I cannot believe it. I think she is super yummy. So many fun things sticking out on all sides. I've used a lot of original vintage documents and I'm going to let you enjoy a silent flip through only with some calm music so that you can fully enjoy this flip through.
Mwah! Mwah!